The challenge to successful rhino hunting lies in finding the right trophy. This will usually be an old bull, well past his prime reproductively and nearing the end of his 40 year lifespan. Because a bull's horns will have grown continually throughout his life, they should be thick at the base and hopefully not too worn down from rubbing. All rhino have phenomenal hearing. This is their most refined sense and their ears never seem to stop moving. Keeping the noise factor down is therefore absolutely essential. The rhino sense of smell is also well developed, but the eyesight is poor. As a result, rhino are relatively easy to approach to within a less than 50 pace shooting distance. It is with good reason that rhinos are referred to as pachyderms, for their skin is incredibly thick and tough. Such a large body also requires that bullet penetration be measured in feet rather than inches. Rhinos are also heavily muscled and sturdily boned. As a result, only the very best quality solids should be used. With regards to calibre, the larger the better when tackling these heavyweights. Consider the 375 H&H &H and good 300 grade solids as a minimum. But realise that all things being equal, larger calibres and heavier bullets are far more effective. From side on, the high heart lung shot is by far the best shot placement option and it is usually not all that difficult to manoeuvre into such a shooting position. At such a large body animal, this kill zone is huge with a considerable margin for shot placement error. When viewed from side on, all white rhino have a prominent and easy visible fold of skin lying horizontally across the lower shoulder area at the level of the elbow joint. This fold makes for an easy identifiable reference point. To place a high heart lung shot, come up the centre line of the foreleg till about 10 inches above this fold of skin and then shift the point of aim rearwards about 6 inches. This shot will then be placed about a hand's length above the prominent bulge which is the point of the elbow. It will also be through the top of the heart and all the plumbing. A rhino shot here will not go far. To be on the safe side, put in as many backing shots as there will be time for. Quartering frontal chest shots are more difficult. Such a shot will need to pass inside the point of the shoulder. Despite being massive, the shoulder joint is not easily visible under the thick, armor plate-like skin of a rhino. When compared to the size of his head, the rhino brain is surprisingly small and it is located very high up in the top of the skull, between the ears. Only in the unlikely event of a full-blown charge is a frontal brain shot an option. Your aim point will be high up on the centre of the forehead, a couple of inches below a line connecting the ear bases. Panthropodus, the leopard, is one of Africa's most sought after big game animals. In fact, many sportsmen regard this cat as one of the world's premier trophies. Known locally as Mr. Spots, Ingui, and Bada, or Chewy, Leopards are the most widely distributed of Africa's big five. Leopards are solitary animals. They are also shy and nocturnal creatures. Only rarely will they be encountered during daylight hours. Leopards vary tremendously in size. This is because they occur in a wide variety of habitats, which supply varying levels of nutrition. A mature tom will therefore weigh between 120 and 180 pounds with a female from 70 to 130. Any tom over 7 feet in length can be regarded as a good trophy. Over 8 feet is absolutely huge. Regardless of length, the true indication of a real trophy is determined by his skull size. From my experiences in the Zambezi Valley, a 15 inch skull is a good trophy. Anything over 16, a monster. Leopards are excellent climbers. They are also territorial. Every leopard will have its own territory, with the size being determined by the availability of prey. The territories of toms tend to be larger than those of females, and will overlap with one or more of them. Territories are scent marked by urine spraying and cat spreading. Leopards are efficient and ruthless killers, a trait which has earned them the title, the professionals of the African bush. They are carnivores and prey on virtually any meat source. They are also noted scavengers and readily eat carrion. Where I hunt in the Zambezi Valley, 
Impala are their favorite prey species. Like lion, leopards are also fond of zebra meat and they will occasionally take a foal or a sub-adult. In mountainous areas, the rock rabbit makes up an important part of their diet. They are also fond of domestic dogs and cats and will venture close to human habitation to catch them. Only occasionally will they kill baboons. Throughout Africa, leopards are ruthless killers of domestic livestock and in days gone by they were heavily persecuted in ranching and farming areas. It can be difficult to tell the difference between males and females, especially in poor light conditions. Mature Tom will be the biggest in body size and have a heavy, thick set and muscular look about him. His head will also be big in relation to overall body size with a distinct masculine look, while his neck will also be thick and muscular. Mature females are more slender and not as well muscled. Their heads are small and their necks are thinner. This results in a definite feminine look. Confusion occurs when distinguishing between young males and mature females. There will not be much to go on except the Tom's look of youth and a possible glimpse of his testicles. He said you hunt an elephant with your legs, a buffalo with your guts, and a lion with your heart. If this is so, you hunt a leopard with your brain, and herein lies the challenge to hunting these spotted felines. In fact, a leopard hunt is very much like a game of chess. It's a contest of wills and an intricate set of maneuvers, with the object being to get a shy, secretive animal to show itself at a reasonable shooting distance during legal shooting time. Baiting is really the only hunting method. Leopards have phenomenal eyesight and almost telepathic hearing. The slightest unnatural sound or flicker of movement will arouse his suspicion. It could also make him just disappear. Blind sitting is a most rewarding experience. It is where you will learn to use all your senses to identify the sounds, sights and smells of Africa. Africa's smaller creatures all hate Mr. Spots and they are not shy about making their feelings known. They will notify you of his pending arrival. One moment the bait tree will be empty and the next he will be there. The light will be fading fast but do not shoot too soon. Rather wait until the leopard settles down and is well positioned for a quick killing shot. Leopard hunting is actually hard work. It involves getting up early and arriving back at camp well after dinner time. Whole days will be spent bouncing over rough bush tracks, checking baits. Couple this with many hours of boring blind sitting. Leopard hunting is both agony and ecstasy. It's also a hell of a lot of good fun. Leopards are thin skinned and lightly boned. Like lion, they too have a highly refined nervous system which can be switched off by a healthy dose of hydrostatic shock. With this in mind, suitable leopard calibers should be fast, flat shooters in the 7mm or larger range. Leopard bullets should also be of adequate weight, but fairly fragile in construction so as to expand quickly to release their energy. Leopards do not require premium quality bullets. In fact, such bullets are not recommended. An accurate rifle, a top quality light gathering scope, and a clearly visible reticle are essential for leopard. This is because most shots will usually be taken in low light conditions. A rock steady shooting rest is also essential to ensure surgically precise shot placement. Most leopard are shot at last light. This creates a problem. As I have already mentioned, no animal will survive more than a few minutes with the top of its heart or the plumbing ruptured. In most instances, It'll usually run a short distance before dropping. During daylight, the follow-up of a leopard shot in this manner will not present a problem. You will have time on your side and a good blood sport to follow. One shot is all that there will be time for at a leopard and what if the shot is poorly placed? A wounded leopard will grunt as it runs away and an unwounded one will do so silently. If a leopard runs away grunting, it needs to be found and the affair concluded. Logic will say, wait until morning before going to look for it. There could, however, be little left of an expensive, hard-earned trophy should hyena find it first. The only option at such times is to follow the blood trail by torchlight. A task not for the faint-hearted, believe me. In fact, 
This is the time when a PH can be excused for having second thoughts about his chosen profession. Such activities are simply not fun. The only shot placement option guaranteed to prevent a gun find it in the dark scenario is the one where the leopard falls as dead as charity out the bait tree. The shot which will accomplish this is the shoulder spinal one. Placed correctly through the shoulder blade, the shot will also sever the spine. This will switch off and kill instantly any leopard, as effectively and as quickly as the switching off of an electric light. The secret is simply to hit it in the right place. This shot is particularly effective for leopards sitting in the dog sitting position. In fact, it's the only option for such a position as the heart is hard to locate at such times. A leopard's heart, like that of the lions, is positioned well back in the chest cavity, far more so than many realize. From the standing side-on position, the only other option is the high heart lung shot. Place the shot halfway up the body, quite some way back behind the shoulder. If the bullet disintegrates inside the chest cavity, the leopard may drop to the shot. Should the bullet fail to expand, the leopard may show little reaction. It'll jump out of the bait tree and run away. Grunting as it does so will indicate it's wounded. Listen carefully for the grunts and take note of their direction. With a heart lung shot and an exit wound, there will be a good blood sport to follow. A leopard shot in this manner will not go far, but you may have to go into the thick stuff to find it. And this is always an unpleasant thing to do. It is for this reason why I love to see a leopard fall as dead as charity out the bait tree. It is also why the correct choice of bullet is so important. With quartering shots, it's all a question of getting the angles right. This is where a mental picture of the shoulder and front leg bones and the internal position of the vital organs will help to make the shot easy. Shots taken at leopard while lying on a branch are extremely difficult. In fact, many PHs will not let their clients shoot at a leopard in this position. Gravity will pull the front leg and shoulder downwards, while the branch will push the chest upwards. This will change the position of the vital organs in relation to the shoulder. Many shots taken at leopard while lying on a branch simply break the front leg. This will have little effect and I guarantee you an interesting follow-up. These shots are just too risky. Likewise, taking a shot at a leopard lying on the ground is also not recommended. Be patient and wait for the leopard to stand up. It will do so eventually. Leopard are easy to kill. The right bullet in the right place will do the job. Panthera leo, the African lion, is the dark continent's most well-known dangerous game animal. Big mature males can weigh up to 500 pounds, stand 4 feet at the shoulder and stretch to a length of almost 10 feet. Lion are magnificent creatures and most certainly deserve to be called king of the beasts. At times they can be bold to the point of arrogance. More often, however, they are shy and elusive. Despite this, lions should always be treated with caution and the utmost respect. Lionesses are usually more aggressive than males, especially when they have cubs at foot. Lions are Africa's supreme predators and they prey on all the continent's animal species. Masters at the art of camouflage, concealment and stalking, lions are powerful enough to kill and drag off prey four times their own body weight. They are also efficient scavengers and think nothing of stealing the kills from others or feeding on the most putrid carrion. Lions live social lives with lionesses forming the nucleus of a pride. All the lionesses in a pride will be related with the availability of food determining just how big the pride will be. Prides tend to be small in areas where prey animals are scarce and large where food is abundant. Pride males are usually immigrants, constantly in competition with other males for the control of the pride and the domination of its territory. Pride males assert their dominance by night roaring and they will patrol their territory regularly. Only male lion develop manes. 
This begins when they are about two and a half to three years old. Some males will, however, remain maneless. A fully maned lion can be regarded as one of the dark continent's most sought after trophies. The color and quality of a lion's mane is determined by its age and genetic makeup. Naturally occurring, free ranging lion with really big manes are truly impressive creatures and very rarely encountered. The fair chase hunting of lion can be intimidating. But as Sir Alfred Peace so correctly observed in his work, The Book of the Lion, he who has never been frightened by a lion has missed half the sport of lion hunting. Where there is no fear, there can be no courage. The unblinking stare of an angry lion has unnerved many an inexperienced big game hunter. This stare is described as one which looks deep into your soul. It is something few forget. The quest for a trophy lion can be regarded as one of big game hunting's most ultimate challenges. A good lion will be surprisingly smart and cunning and extremely unpredictable in its behavior. Baiting is the most commonly practiced hunting method simply because lion are lazy animals. They are also dedicated scavengers, gladly accepting any meal offered to them. Lion have huge appetites and can consume 25% of their own body weight in a single feeding session. Zebra is their favorite meat, closely followed by buffalo and hippo. Lion baits are usually hung from the limbs of carefully selected trees. Such a tree will usually be in the center of an open area which allows good all-round visibility. Shooting will more than likely take place from a blind, positioned downwind, 80 to 100 paces from the bait tree. Closer than this will be within the lion's attack zone. This increases the chances of being charged while in the blind, something I don't suggest you experience. Lion are more active at night and usually feed on a bait after dark. The trick is to catch them close to the bait at first light. In hunting areas, old lion are experienced and usually too cunning to be on a bait during daylight. In this case, they can be tracked to their daytime resting place. In the right conditions, tracking a lion is relatively easy. <laughs> That's bloody big, yeah. After feeding, lion invariably head for water. They then seek out a cool place to sleep off their meal. With a full belly, a lion will sleep for up to 18 hours. Tracking lion in this manner makes for an exciting hunt, especially as its conclusion will take place at close range and usually in thick cover, a combination guaranteed to produce more than enough adrenaline. Calibers and bullets best suited for lion need to be carefully selected. Lion have refined and sensitive nervous systems, which can be switched off by a healthy dose of hydrostatic shock. Lion are also thin-skinned and light-boned. For them, shock is the most desirable ballistic requirement. For the initial shock, I like a bullet to be fast and quick expanding, so that it sets up quickly and liberates its energy. It must also create a large wound channel. Penetration is not a major factor when shots are taken at well-positioned lion. A word of caution, aware of a lion's well-developed shoulder muscles. They can cause poorly constructed small caliber bullets to disintegrate on impact, sometimes with disastrous results. A scoped 375 H&H &H and quick expanding bonded bullets are, I believe, the best combination for the initial shot at well-positioned lion. Correct first shot placement is of vital importance, simply because wounded lion are extremely dangerous. A wounded lion will invariably charge and it will have to be stopped. Something hard to do. To stop a lion, you need to either brain it or crumple it with shock. This requires a large caliber and a heavy expanding top bullet. Scope rifles, while recommended for the initial shot, are not the best option for stopping a charge. A big double and heavy expanding bullets are the best for this. Lion differ from other animals by having their shoulders positioned very far forward, with the heart positioned low down in the chest cavity. From side on, 
the bottom of the heart will be just above the point of the elbow when the front leg is at its most rearward position. The hunter has two options for the first shot from the standing side-on position. The easiest option is the high heart lung shot. Place the shot well back behind the shoulder on the body's midline. The heart and lungs are large with a good margin for shot placement error. It is important to remember that a shot into this area will not be immediately effective. Opportunities for side-on shots are sometimes offered while the lion is lying in what I call the sphinx position. This makes for a very difficult shot because the shoulders will have moved further forward. Also, the heart will be just off the ground while a distended belly can further confuse organ orientation. All shots at lying down game are difficult. The reference points will change and with lion this is no exception. In fact, many PHs will not let their client take a shot at a lying down line. It's just too risky. The spine lies directly between the shoulder blades. With this in mind, the high shoulder spinal shot is extremely effective. It will produce a drop to the shot effect. At last light, this is a good option, but only if the shoulder blade is visible. It could prevent the follow-up of a wounded line in failing light. Some males may not carry heavy manes, making the shoulder blade more visible. This makes the shoulder spinal shot easy, but there is little room for shooting error. The situation changes completely when a lion's mane covers the shoulders. This makes the shot difficult, and I do not recommend it. Some shots are taken with lions standing on their hind legs feeding. If the lion is facing directly away, the spinal shot is the only option. Make sure it is placed exactly in the middle of the body, just behind the shoulder blades. With all quartering shots, recognize the angles and visualize the internal anatomy. From the straight going away position, a backup shot placed at the base of the tail will anchor a lion. But only take the shot at a wounded lion. Never, and I mean never, take this as an initial shot, no matter how good a trophy lion may be. The full frontal chest shot is also effective when placed squarely into the centre of the chest. Over a bait, lion are easily killed with a well-placed shot from a relatively small calibre. Wounded lion, however, and it'll undergo the most amazing Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde transformation. A charge from a wounded lion is one of Africa's most frightening experiences. Following the information I have just given you will reduce the odds of you ever having to face the situation. Crocodilus niloticus, the Nile crocodile, is probably Africa's most underrated trophy species. These scaly creatures have been around since the time of the dinosaurs. Crocs are reptiles. They breed by laying eggs during the dry season in carefully selected nesting sites. Young crocs are vulnerable to predation and only about 2% survive through to adulthood. Crocs are irregular and opportunistic feeders. For a large portion of their lives, they rely on fish. They only turn to catching mammals when too big and slow to catch fish effectively. Crocs are cold-blooded. This means they do not maintain a constant body temperature. It varies with that of the environment. By alternatively basking and immersing themselves in water, they are able to keep their body temperature constant. Crocs are nocturnal and spend the hours of darkness in water. This is when they feed most actively. Adult crocs can stay submerged for up to an hour. Bull crocodile, as old males are called, have large and broad heads with wide V-shaped muzzles. The whole head will also have a knobbly appearance with a thick, broad and muscular neck. At the throat will be well-developed and fleshy jowls. The eyes will also be spread far apart. The head of a large female will also be long and slender almost parallel sided. Being able to accurately estimate the body length of a trophy croc is extremely difficult. It is my experience that there is always a tendency to overestimate a croc's body length. 
Throughout Africa, very few bull crocodile exceed 15 feet in length. Even fewer females exceed 12 feet. A useful tip to judge a big croc's length is to estimate the straight line distance in inches from the nostrils to the eyes. This length in inches will be roughly equal to its body length in feet. Any croc in excess of 12 feet can be regarded as a good trophy. Crocs are challenging to hunt because they see, hear and smell extremely well. They are also shy and cautious creatures, often guarded by feathered watchdogs. These are the birds which co-inhabit their basking sites. Crocs also appear to have a sixth sense. In my experience, they just seem to know when they are being stalked. The very nature of their amphibious existence ensures that they must be anchored with a single, precisely placed shot. Herein lies a challenge to croc hunting, because this shot is a difficult one. If not placed perfectly, the croc will more than likely get back to water and be lost. Finding the right trophy sized specimen, getting in close enough for a shot, and then recovering this enormous trophy is what the sport hunting of crocs is all about. To successfully anchor a big croc calls for precise first shot placement. This is because the two killing areas are only golf ball in size. This small target, combined with shooting distances up to 100 paces, will naturally affect the selection of a hunter's rifle, calibre and bullet. Whatever combination is chosen needs to be capable of pinpoint accuracy. With this in mind, the various 338s and premium quality 250 grain expanding bullets are a sensible and adequate option. So is a 375 H&H, but only if the shot can be made accurately. A good scope is essential for perfect shot placement. For brain or neck shots, premium quality expanding bullets work best. A shot in exactly the right place will anchor the biggest crocodile. Miss only by an inch or two, and that may well be the last you will see of an expensive trophy. Only two shots are recommended to reliably anchor a big crocodile. These are the brain shot, and the spinal one, just behind the head. As I've just mentioned, a big croc's brain is only about the size of a golf ball. 